Now let's look at the verbal section of the test. One of the things that makes the verbal section unique on the SAT and indeed unique in tests is that they ask you for the best answer. Now when I say you're looking for the best answer, a lot of students look at me and go, duh, I think I could figure out I was looking for the best answer without taking a stupid course. You could except for the way they interpret the phrase best answer. Best answer to them can mean the best of five bad choices. You'll look down there and go, well none of these are any good. You'd be right, none of them are. But one will be better than the other four. That's what we call the best of the bad. The flip side of that I think is a little tougher. They'll give you two correct answers. You'll look down there and go, either one of these could be correct. Again, you'd be right, either one could be correct. But again, one will be better than the other. Now one of the ways to combat this is to read to eliminate answer choices. Now when you take tests at school, you've studied for it, you know what you're looking for, so you're searching for answer choices. You're looking for reasons for an answer choice to be correct. Switch that around. Read to eliminate answer choices. That way when you get to the best of the bad, the ones you've eliminated leaves the best one standing. And if you're reading to eliminate answer choices, when you get down to those two that appear that either could be correct, it's easier to eliminate one rather than to include both of them. So read to eliminate answer choices. It'll be a big help. Okay, now let's look at the specific sections of the verbal. First, let's look at sentence completion. Now with sentence completion, you have a pretty big advantage. You're used to hearing the English language spoken well and seeing it written well. That's a big advantage here. Trust your ear when you read through the sentence completions listen to how it sounds when you're substituting the different words in there make it make sense to your ear and learn to trust your ear there's gonna be vocabulary involved in these questions but sometimes you will know what a word means and not be able to completely verbalize it but you'll have a feeling for what that word means so with practice you'll learn to trust it now one of the key features of sentence completion is that you want to look for clue words these are words in the sentences that point you to the right answer. You learn to search for these, but they're clue words in every sentence completion. Let's show you a couple of examples. Now this sentence completion would be in the fairly easy section. In temperament they were a complete contrast. The older man was quiet, courteous, and slightly blank. The younger man was talkative, blank, and quite gregarious. Well, look at what they're saying. They're a contrast. They're different. The older man was quiet, courteous. The younger was talkative, and gregarious. Well, let's look at our answer choices in the second spot. We want to look at talkative and gregarious. Well, indignant, snobbish, subdued, and withdrawn won't work with that. We want someone who's sociable or outgoing, or flamboyant. And aloof means slightly standoffish, keeping to himself. So that'd fit in the first slot. That's how you use your clue words. Now with sentence completion, to make these more difficult, they have two ways of manipulating the difficulty. First, they may give you a relatively easy sentence, but the vocabulary words are tough. You, everywhere you look, you'll see difficult vocabulary words. The second way they manipulate difficulty is to give you fairly easy vocabulary a practically incomprehensible sentence. Let's look at an example of that. Check this sentence out. Our power as individual consumers is blank. We cannot, by choosing among the array of goods displayed before us, have a blank influence on the basic decisions of large corporations about which goods they will produce. Terrible sentence. But it's their silly test so they can get away with it. Some students get bogged down by trying to take in the whole sentence. We found it really helpful to look and focus on the subject and the verbs of a sentence. Right here it says our power is something. Then it says we cannot. Well if I said to you my power was blah blah blah, I can't. Does it sound like I have a lot of power? No. There's something limiting about that. Well if we look down at our answer choices, essential, global, convenient, liberal, or positive, expansive answer choices. The only one that's limiting is narrow. It's got to be our answer. Plus, a second way 
to know that this is the correct answer is to realize that telling means a lasting or important influence. Yet a person who doesn't have a very good vocabulary would look at telling and say, well, that's just like talking, so that can't be right. So that further confirms you've got the right answer with B. The other thing to look out for with sentence completion questions are words of contrast. Now these are words that turn the sentence back on itself. It will be going along in one direction, then a word of contrast will turn it in a different direction. Now by words of contrast we mean words like yet, ironically, in spite of, despite, however, in contrast, although, whereas, and but. Keep an eye out for these words of contrast. They're crucial in working these sentence completion questions out.